Now, a hypothesis is a structured statement written out by scientists that prepares the scientist for the experiment. It really sets the stage for your experiment to be clearly, logically laid out. And so there's a special structure for it, a special way of writing it that I think is really important to actually learn here. So I'm going to give you an example of what I would consider to be a perfect junior high school hypothesis for an experiment, and we'll kind of break it down into pieces here. So if bean plants grow in soil with extra salt, then they will grow fewer leaves than bean plants grown in regular soil. This is reasonable because extra salt might affect roots' ability to take up water. So let's look at the parts of this statement here, this, these two sentences which form a what I would consider a reasonable hypothesis for a junior high student to make. If bean plants grow in soil with extra salt, well, what's coming after the word if is the experimental group putting bean plants in with extra salt. The amount of salt you add is called the independent variable, remember. What comes after the word then, T-H-E-N, then, it happens to be the dependent variable. The growing fewer leaves, the amount of leaves they grow here depends on how much salt is added to the soil. So there's actually a structure to this hypothesis that can be written as an if-then statement. If your experimental group is written out, then you write out the dependent variable. So let's look at this. The if-then deductive hypothesis could be written like this. First if, then, and then you put compared to. So what we're going to do here is read this hypothesis sentence example up on the upper right. If bean plants grow in soil with extra salt, then they will grow fewer leaves than bean plants grown in regular soil. This is reasonable because extra salt might affect roots' ability to take up water. And we are going to figure out which of those is the control group, what is the group you're going to be really measuring as an effect, what is the experimental group, what's the independent variable, and what's the dependent variable. And we're going to put those elements into our yellow if-then compared to structure. So let's start, actually, you might want to pause the video and try it yourself right now. So why don't you think about it, okay? Pause the video right now and think about it. Hey, you didn't pause it. I know you didn't. Okay, no, well, here's the answer then. So if it says, if bean plants grow in soil with extra salt. So we just said earlier that bean plants growing in soil with extra salt is the experimental group. So after the word if comes the experimental group. This happens to also have the independent factor that you're changing, the independent variable, the amount of extra salt. After the word THEN, then, is what you expect to see as a result. You're going to be measuring f the number of leaves in the bean plant. So then, what you measure comes after that, and that's also the dependent variable. So we can see that here, um, showing right here. And then you'd compare what your unusual weird thing is that you just discovered, like, oh my gosh, there's no leaves anymore on any plants with salt, you compare that to what would normally happen in your original control group. So that's compared to a control group. So if you look at the structure, oops, sorry, ah, back up. I can't back this up. Can you believe it? Oh, now I can. Watch this. Can I? Yes. Okay, so if, sorry, um, if you compare what am I doing? Oh, you compare it right here. Okay, if bean plants grow in soil with extra salt, then they will grow fewer leaves than, T-H-A-N. That word than has the control group coming after it. Bean plants grown in regular soil. So notice there's two words here, then and than. The T-H-E-N is part of the hypothesis, 
And the word than is the extremely perfect hypothesis comparing the control group. Um, and then the next statement, this seems reasonable because extra salt, it, it's explaining the rationale for the hypothesis. In science fairs, you often need this sort of rationale for your hypothesis guess. You don't want your hypothesis to be totally random, just some weirdo guess. There should be some reasonable idea behind the guess. And so that's why we have a statement of why this seems like a rational idea. So just to summarize here, um, here's the structure of the hypothesis. And notice that it relates actually to the, um, the, uh, the what? Um, oh, the graph. So here's the word if. If, remember that's the experimental group or independent variable. In this case, it's salt concentration. On your graph, you'll have salt concentration on the bottom and the number of leaves, which comes after the word then, as the dependent variable. So your independent variables on the x-axis, dependent variables on the y-axis. And hopefully you'll see some results. In this case, it's showing a negative correlation. So if you were going to write an if-then hypothesis to test this question, does rotor length affect the speed of paper helicopters? Try it yourself right now. Pause it and try. Okay, so hopefully you have something like this. If rotor length is either increased or decreased, doesn't matter, then paper helicopters will drop, now you choose, faster or slower than uncut helicopters. This seems reasonable because, and then you think of some reason, maybe a smaller surface area of rotors has less air resistance. That would seem pretty reasonable right there. So this is one way, the, a good way, I think, to write a hypothesis. So to summarize, your structured hypothesis relates directly to your graph. In a controlled scientific experiment, your hypothesis written, if I do something new and different, that's your independent variable on the x-axis, then I will see an effect that I can measure. This then would correlate directly to your graph in a science fair board, for example, Somebody could walk up to your science fair board and look at your graph and quickly see the effect of um, what your controlled experiment did. They would see the dependent variable changing as a result of the independent variable changing. So for the helicopter experiment, for example, as the rotor length increases, something may happen to the descent speed. Might increase or decrease a positive correlation or a negative correlation. So in summary, a controlled test will determine for you whether rotor length of helicopters does affect their descent speed or not. So you can learn a lot with the scientific method. It's really fun and I encourage you all to try your own experiments and discover things for yourselves. Thanks for listening. It's time for our joke, our joke of the day. What should our joke be? Um, oh, I know. What did the acorn say when it grew up? This is a math joke. Geometry! Get it? Ha <laughs> ha. Geometry. Bye!